Today on The Breakfast, as the World Health Organization celebrates its 75th anniversary, Nigeria is grappling with inaccessibility of quality health care, corruption, poor health infrastructure, insufficient financial investment, and lack of sufficient health personnel. What is the way forward? We'll be having uh, conversations around this. Also on the breakfast, Super Eagles dropped five places to become the 40th in the world and sixth in Africa in the latest FIFA ranking. While in the World Cup group stage, Super Falcons will be up against Canada, Australia and New Zealand. We'll have Monday Thomas join the conversation as we proceed. Don't forget, we'll also be looking through today's newspapers, analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Welcome to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Uh, happy holiday and happy Good Friday right here. And I hope you're having a great time. So it means that you're probably just at home and enjoying yourself. And that's okay, but some of us never get the privilege. It's more like a luxury. But it's fine. As always, we start our conversation what's making the rounds in different quarters. Uh, what are Nigerians talking about, whether in different states. And uh, f this morning, we'll start off with what happened in Delta State. My name is Messi Abopo. Uh, very unfortunate incident, which is very common and very popular in Nigeria, is the fact that PDO files would always be with us. They're always with us. It's not just Nigeria, but it cuts across the entire world. So you always have PDO files. Uh, a man has bagged a 15 years imprisonment for defiling his neighbor's 10-year-old daughter in Delta State. And that's what a lot of people have been talking about in the different social media spaces and even offline. Now, in a high court sitting in Ifuron, Delta State, has sentenced Goss Power. Uh, who is 38 years old to uh, 15 years imprisonment for defiling his neighbor's daughter, who is 10 years old, like I mentioned. Uh, the court was presided by Justice Michael Nduka Obi, who handed him the sentence after finding him guilty of the charges that was leveled against him. However, the defendant was arraigned before the court on the charge of having unlawful carnal knowledge of a child. A child is a child, according to the Constitution, un until he or she becomes turns 18 but that also does not take out the fact that when you don't have consent you know before any sexual intercourse that is also you know a crime uh, this also un unlawful canal knowledge happened on the 30th of march that was in 2020 uh, this is an offense that is actually punishable under section 218 of the criminal code law in delta state that of 2006 However, the chief state counsel in the Ministry of Justice in Delta State called three witnesses. The witnesses actually, or the witness informed the court that the defendant was a neighbor to the child's parent at the time of the incident and formed the habit of sleeping with her while her parents were not around. Now, on God's power, according to eyewitness report and what was presented in court, would give the victim, that's the little child, 15, between 50 and 100 naira after every act and threatened to kill her and her parents if she ever reported them, you know, or reported the incident. So I'll kill you. you. You can't tell anybody. If you try to tell your mom, you try to tell your dad, tell anybody, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to kill your daddy and mommy. Do you want that? And I'm probably sure the child will say no. However, the vigilant neighbor who noticed, you know, the act reported that to the victim's parent who in turn reported to the local vigilante and a trap was set for him and he was eventually caught in the act and was handed over to the police for investigation uh, we can't even put out that you know video even if we had it it's not something you want to look at you know during interrogation of the police station he made confessional statements saying that oh you know something which was i mean charged before the court that he pleaded not guilty according to him he had also told the court that the girl's parent had issues with him and they were framing him for the offense so he didn't commit it he was being framed even after he was caught in the act i mean how evil can you be then so the court stated that uh at the end of the day this is a summary of it because it's quite lengthy is that the court with all of the findings and everything that went on said that, that he such a person should not be uh should be kept out of circulation sounds like you know the note as to read the streets of pedophiles and sentence would serve as a deterrence to other pedophiles 
which is very apt. You know, so this sentence, 15 years in prison, you know, will serve as a deterrence to other pedophiles that we have in our society and the fact that he will be off the streets because he's, 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 a, he's a threat. And uh, still working freely, this is according to the judgment of the court on the streets of Delta State, would not, you know, do anybody any good. So, yes, that's why, you know, the judgment was given because it was found guilty. But let's even get to the crux of this matter. It's unfortunate that pedophiles are everywhere. When I mean everywhere, they're not just in Nigeria. In Africa, in Nigeria, in other parts of the world, you have pedophiles everywhere. And our children need to be protected from this set of persons or people. Now, in most cases, they're not strangers. You need to understand that pedophiles sometimes are not people that are far from you. They're very close. They could be your neighbor. They could be family. They could also be spiritual leaders. They could be anybody. Yes, in, in all cases, we don't even want to have this. It's, I think it's a conversation you're not even sure of having. It's not just limited to the girl child. So like I said, these people, this set of people who like to have um, sexual intercourse with children are everywhere and they're not far from us. So you have to, we need to pay attention very close attention, you know, to our children. If we think that they are future of tomorrow, they are the future of tomorrow, they are the leaders of tomorrow, we have to protect them. Now, you cannot imagine the psychological trauma that this 10-year-old would be faced with. You can't even imagine the drama that she probably would, you know, would be facing for the remaining part of her life. You can't take that away. And as much as we say that it's commendable of the Delta State government for having laws that, you know, it's uh, laws that sexual offenders can be punished. In, a, in this particular case, you have a child there. Uh, again, you, are, you would also want to agree with me that, you know, the laws are very feeble. The laws uh, against sexual offenders are feeble. In most cases, even if they have been, you know, invoked or domesticated, at the end of the day, what is the level of implementation? Then you also need the police on board because they're also part of the entire process. But honestly, it breaks my heart. Um, I, I, like I would say, I'm not sure that we're ready for this conversation. But again, we need to pay attention. Very close one, you know, to our children. We need to protect them. Just recently, uh, I mean, it's just of recent that we have in 2022 that 34 states. So we're having 34 states out of 36 states that have domesticated the Child Rights Act, an offshoot of the United Nations Convention on the Right of, you know, a Child. This act simply prohibits child marriage, uh, which seeks better welfare for children and supports compulsory education for every child among other uh, progressive provision. So, I mean, there's a lot of harm that's done to our children on a daily basis in our country, that's Nigeria. So you find out that in some quarters, in some parts, some people hide under the guise of religion. So you have underage marriages where kids are married uh, off, you know, and Africa, Nigeria seem to be the center hosting all of that. It is really saddening. So yes, if we have, I mean, as of 2022, that's the report. The government said 34 out of 36 states. So then you still have 32 states. But prior, before now, prior to this time, in 2019, it was just about 12 states that were still yet to say a yes to it. And even if you have the state who have said we have demo, demo, um, domesticated this, we have said, oh, this law has been you know, activated. That will be the word. Uh, what's the level of implementation? So it's another thing to say, hey, the laws have been um, you know, activated. What's the level of implementation at the end of the day? It is very unfortunate. It's very saddening. Uh, I'm not sure you want to even begin to picture that. Imagine your 10-year-old or 15-year-old uh, being taken advantage of the people who ought to protect these children are the ones taking advantage of them. And how far can we fare? Uh, recently, Kenya did something very fantastic. And if you juxtapose, you know, the policy that's been put out for Kenya, especially which reflects the interest of the children and sexual abuse, especially for the girl child, not to say that the boy child is also not uh, being abused, whatever. But if you look at this sexual offense, uh, it, it's a lot of progress compared, compared to what we're experiencing in Nigeria. And so, yes, the fight against these uh, pedophiles it's encompassing. We can't just allow that to the government alone. All hands must be on deck. We need to constantly report. In cases, there are so many cases. I mean, 
We've witnessed cases where, you know, the parents also are baiting this act. They're, they're, they're part of the entire process. They are covering up for whatever reason. Maybe because their husbands are involved in other cases, a family member is involved, and then we can't af af afford the scandal. But then, uh, you know, a child's life and right is being threatened. Children that we're supposed to protect, they, they can't take decisions on their own. We ought to protect them until they get to the age where they can take decisions. Even at that point, when you forcefully, you know, you have uh, intercourse with a person that's above even if they get to 18 and then you say, okay, they are not adults, then does that make it right? Because whatever has to happen has to be, you know, an agreement, sort of. So, yes, we commend the Delta State Government. This is happening because their laws, the laws have been activated, the laws in place, you know, to uh, punish this offender, someone who's, been, who's committed this crime. Imagine that there was no law. Imagine that, you know, the laws were not there, what, what probably would have happened? No, justice would have been meted. And on the other hand, it's also commended that the police was also involved because you can also talk about this without the police involvement. And so, yes, it's a plus for the Delta State government, but we're saying that we want to see this replicated across the 36 states, including the FCT. We have a duty to protect these children because they're children. And even if, uh, you know, they get to a point where they're not children, rape is not acceptable, you know, in our laws. Uh, we'll move away from that. Another also very unfortunate and sad incident is that uh, the NSCDC has arrested three individuals over millions, over two million fake currency. Now, I, I'd like to let you know that before this time, before this time, because we had the election, elections were one of the biggest thing that happened you know, in 2023, especially in the first quarter. There were several reports as to uh, the government and, you know, political parties, dumb, I mean, Okay, not to say dominant, but the political parties, these were, you know, the conversations that were on, on in different social media spaces. Political parties involved in printing fake Naira notes, especially when we had the issue of the cash crunch and, you know, the Naira redesign. The Zamfara Command of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps has arrested three persons in connection with uh, fake currency worth two million Naira. They were paraded, you know, while parading the suspects because you're also going to be proven guilty by a court of competence jurisdiction. So you are still innocent until you're proven guilty, even if you were caught right-handed. And that's, that's how it works. So while parading the suspect, the command's public relations officer said that the suspects were arrested for being involved in printing and minting and circulating fake Naira notes and the United States dollar notes to the public. Uh, Uchi said that uh, they were arrested in Gusa on April the 3rd, uh, just recently, trying to pay for a transport fare with a fake 1,000 Naira note. But I like us also to think about this, that some time ago, there were reports, we had several reports that a total of 67,265 pieces of counterfeit notes uh, with a nominational value of 5.6.83 million was recorded in 2020. Now, this was 20.80% in volume and 12.18% value. However, then, uh, 84,934 pieces and 64.71 million uh, in 201 tricycle operators were said to have been identified. We can't continue because if you look at the fact that people are going ahead to... So l let's look at it logically now. So you have a group of persons or individuals who are printing fake notes. You also have the fact that these notes are in circulation. You have the Apex Bank. You have the relevant government authorities or authorities saying we have had several figures outside. We also remember three months ago when we were faced with, you know, the redesign policy, the fact that the Naira was not available. Let's just say shortly after that, notes, counterfeits were available. So I think that we need to do better. What we need to do is better. It's not rocket science. It's the fact we need to pay attention to it. The fact that people can sit down, individual group of persons sit down to print the note is that we have a weak security feature. It's easy for you to mint the note. So let's even take a look at what has happened in the United Kingdom. Because uh, just recently, the United Kingdom replaced all paper notes with uh, polymer, which is plastic note. And they say that lasts, lasts long. It's hard to produce. I mean, it's hard to produce a fake one and cuts huge costs for printing uh, money regularly. So uh, it's just important that if people are 
if it's easy for anyone, myself, any other person to just go ahead and print a, a note, then if then it definitely means that our security features and what have you, the entire process is so easy that people can break it. So we need to up the game as a people, as a government. That's what we need to do. And on the other hand as well, I know that we have the Ministry of Information and Orientation across different parts. So we, there's a Ministry of Orientation Information in the 36th state of the Federation. Uh, I want to be corrected if I'm wrong. And so when, if you look at the nomenclature, information orientation, what's going on? Do we even have this, you know, level of orientation? What exactly is going on? Because I know that this budgetary allocation to this agency, people are earning salaries, but are they doing their job? We need to, how do you identify? Because it has to be easy for you to identify a fake. Imagine that you have 200 million naira or 2 million naira fake currency. Do you know how much would have gone into the entire system? Do you know how much has, has been going? We're still waiting for... Uh, you know, all of this report, however. But just imagine how much is going on. So imagine that the Ministry of Information and Orientation is doing her job. People know uh, what to look out for. It's easy for you to identify a fake, you know, note from an original. Then the, a lot will be done. So it's, it's just a two-way thing that, uh, that we'll definitely just have uh, a way of pre preventing all of these occurrences. So again, I think that it's time for us to, you know, get back to the drawing board as a government, as a people, the CBN, that's the Apex Bank, you know, uh, the agencies of government to do their own bidding as Nigerians as well. This also would douse down all of these activities. But then you won't think about all of the allegations that were put out prior to this time that we're in, we're in April, and all of the complaints as to uh, political parties Persons who are in these parties who are printing fake notes, what are in Naira or dollars, just to vote by, uh, that should have been investigated and those who are involved should have been brought to book because that's exactly what government exists for. And uh, we can only hope that we get it better and better every other time. I will just quickly delve to the next one is the fact that... A th <laughs> so there's a report that thugs invaded Labour Party headquarters in the AFCT. Uh, you know, and according to this report, uh, Lamy Day, a papa, deputy national chairman of the Labour Party in the South, says he's taking charge of the affairs of the party due to this particular occurrence. The declaration came after Julius Abiru, national chairman of the party, alleged that talks aided by the police officers invaded the party's headquarters in the federal capital territory and caused damage to the property. And however, blame Abiru uh, uh, that the talk or the alleged talk invasion is of the All Progressive Congress. Uh, it, it's unfortunate that the kind of politics that we practice in our polity. I think we do have, you know, a tape to roll on this particular one. Let's quickly look at that when we return. We'll talk some more. Please stay with us. Now, the Labour Party office is under attack. All the doors at the national headquarters have been broken and they have entered the office, purportedly trying to hold a meeting in the office. That meeting is not authorized by me, it's not authorized by the National Working Committee. The Labour Party is under serious attack, personally and individually, because of the case we have against the APC in court. All of this blackmail, all of this attack is tailored towards destroying the mandate that has been freely given to us by Nigerians. Nigerians must rise to the occasion defend their country, defend democracy, and defend the Labour Party. Thank you. Thank you now. Well, it's still very unfortunate that even after the elections, all of this attack uh, will continue, but it's over to the security agencies, a very relevant one, that it's the sole responsibility of the men of the Nigerian police force, you know, to ensure that lives and properties are protected and uh, maintaining peace and order in a, in a democratic dispensation. Uh, then we, we expect that the police would, you know, swing into action. That, you know, the government of the day will ensure that people are protected, their lives are protected. Uh, we would do the needful, and this would never happen. You can also take out the fact that uh, 
interest. So every other time you have a political party, you see that our political parties, uh, people seem to swing from one point to the other. People will decamp when their interests are not represented at the end of the day. Uh, because uh, at the end of the day, people, the, the, there's no ideology. Some of our political parties lack, if not all, ideologies, and it's easy for all of the swindling and all of the undemocratic behavior in our polity. And what do you expect if at the party level people are behaving undemocratically? Then do you expect, you know, a better thing? Do you expect a, a better projection? Do you expect that when a, a free, a fair, you know, ground is not affordable to the people, you know, at the party level, what do you expect, you know, at the center? It's, it's just a trickle down of what's going on, you know, in the party. And then that would also happen, you know, at the national level. But that's the size of it. Uh, we take a quick breather when we return. We look at the pages of the national dailies at this point. Judy Johnson will be joining us. Please stay with us. Good morning.